Hello and welcome to another episode of Eat Smoke Drink. Today I am reviewing the Gordon McPhail Jura. You're probably thinking, Jura? Jura is not very good. I agree with you. Um, actually, Jura Distillery Bottlings, I'm not a big fan. Okay, and if I offend anyone out there, well, whatever. But um, I'm not a big fan of Jura Distillery Bottlings, and I'll tell you why. Because they are, they are strange enough to be interesting, but not strange enough to be interesting if that makes sense so they they're just a little bit strange but they're not they don't follow it through with a palette and the finish they're always low abv and they're always a little bit youthful and a little bit mm. when you have a jura distillery bottling it's usually pretty boring it's usually pretty underwhelming um it just lacks interest factor low abv lacks age so an independently boiled jura is something else um, an independent bottle Jura, especially when it's a single barrel, it is something special, something to behold. Um, especially when it's 27 years old, it is completely something else. It's an island whiskey, old-fashioned style, and actually Jura, to be, to be fair, Jura is in a league of its own, in my opinion, when it comes to style. So here it is. Let's get nosing and see what we're working with. Really bizarre. Straight away, I'm getting a distinct, distinct caramel butterscotch. Butterscotch. Delicious nose. But what I like about Jura is that there's a strange salinity to it. There's a strange meatiness to it that I can't explain. There's also a strange peatiness to it as well. Not like your normal peat. Almost like a, a peat that smells a bit like a clay swamp. It's really weird. So on the nose, I'm getting a bit of clay swamp. A bit of smoky peat, ginger, meatiness, just a general meatiness, and a sickly, sickly sweet butterscotch, buttery, burnt butter butterscotch. Mmm, what a nose. And when I keep nosing it, like I said, you've got to be patient with it. It's only 54.1%, but just going to be let it open up definitely very very herbal very herbal it is an american um, oak refill american hogshead but it is herbal ultra complex on the nose ultra complex on the nose it's syrupy it's thick it's viscous it's intense compelling and this might sound really strange, but it's got a faint hint of onion. Okay, so when you cut an onion, and then your hand's got onion, and then you wash it, but it still has onion, it has a little bit of that kind of medicinal oniony smell. Absolutely outstanding. Delicious, delicious nose. Now when you keep nosing it, you let it breathe a bit more, let the air in there, let it flow. I'm getting... I'm getting a little bit of cereal note, I'm getting a little bit of yeast, some bread, some sourdough. Outstanding. Let, now let's get tasting. Whoa. Slight fire, but very savory. Very savory. Almost got a little bit of a, a plasticine, clay plasticine, sculpting clay taste to it. Almost a bit like Play Doh. Mm. Definitely a peat smoke influence. Not heavily peated as you know it, but I can definitely taste like some sort of peat or smoke in there. That's quite pronounced. Very herbal. Very herbal, very medicinal, but it's sweet at the same time. Almost like um, a bit of ginseng, 
a hint of licorice, ginger, almost like a Chinese medicine soup. Not quite, but you know. Distinct sweetness to it, brown sugar syrup. Oh wow, there's a straight, this is the thing about Jura, when you have your normal Jura bottlings, it's strange but doesn't last, but the strangest and this just last, the palate, the finish is so long, the, pal the finish is so long, so intense, it tastes coffee bean, but I'm not getting the coffee bean, but I'm getting the bitterness, but I'm not coffee bean, butterscotch 100%, um, it tastes grass, I'm not getting the grass either. But it is just a bizarre whiskey. Just a bizarre whiskey. I, I, I actually struggle to put it into a category of flavor. Flavor. I, I, I just don't know how to do it. Um, it's just such a weird thing. Bottom line, it is quite delicious. It is extremely compelling, but not weird enough that you can't smash the bottle down with a group of friends in one sitting. I think that this is a... A bottle kill on a night you have this one bottle a few friends a few good cigars and boom there you go you have your night sorted for you cigar pairings this is quite robust enough and and complex enough to handle pretty much most cigars out there so I would say personally I would pair this with a uh, Dominican um, maybe a Maduro Dominican uh, something that's a little bit spicy to match strainness and savouriness. That's what I would do with this one. If you put something too mild with it, I think it'll drown. But hey, that's fine too as a counterbalance. But for me, I want something a little bit more robust with this one because it is robust. And I don't really get, you know, like some people say, oh, it's too much, it's too rich. I don't get that. So um, I think this one is a, an excellent, excellent um, um, matching for pretty much most cigars. But yeah, look, it's a very strange whiskey. It's hard for me to articulate what I'm tasting in there, except for what I've done so far. Let me try it a little bit more. A little bit of sootiness is coming through now that it's breathed a little bit. And almost like a freshly, freshly tanned leather as well is coming through. So there you go, letting it breathe. And letting your nose breathe as well really helps. but delicious very delicious would I buy this again yes I would I would highly recommend buying this or chasing distillery uh, sorry um, independently bottled Jura bottlings because it is very compelling um, like I said I don't endorse a normal bottlings okay if you buy a normal bottling because I say this is good then you know be careful be wary it's not gonna deliver um, the independent but this is my second independent bottling Jura and so far it's two on two both have been exceptional. Until next time, make sure you eat my drink. Cheers. See you next time.